last bit of fabrication that our four-wheel drive 750cc Barbie Dream Camper needs is long travel suspension. So we can jump higher, rally faster, and crawl over anything. We are giving away an ArcDroid CNC plasma robot with a plasma cutter. Every $5 spent on our website gets you an entry, so check it out below. here. Time to go dig the jig out of the scrap pile. One of the things I need is a little spacer block that is this size with the right size hole in it um, so that I can weld that little block to the jig where that shock mount goes and then that way when I build a new A-arm it'll be in exactly the same spot relative to this. Got my jig rearranged here for this first a arm. It was this, now it's just this and this. Um, because those are the only parts that uh, are worth, you know, reusing as opposed to just making new ones. So I've just been sanding these down a little bit so I can just use that little bit of a stub as some extra rigidity and just slide these over and then weld them onto this piece of, you know, this, this solid piece there that fits the ball joint. This piece, if I go at exactly this angle, it comes out to like out here a little bit. So I'm just gonna put like a tiny bit of a bend in it so it goes more like that. Got this part done, I have it now flipped over. So the way this jig that I made here works, you get that fixed and then that makes the, the length and angle of all of that right relative to this for things like caster and you know, all of those things. And then we flip it upside down and that aligns it with the original shock mount location. I'll draw up a bracket in CAD that fits this bolt hole and then it'll reinforce the strength, the, the entire length of this tube because that more or less lines up with it. It'll have to have a little bit of a bend in there but not enough to like change the design of it or anything. So in my never-ending obsession with uh, weight reduction and aesthetics, <laughs> I think that looks pretty cool. Now we're just gonna make a file to cut it and uh, you know, see what happens. Uh, I think that's officially the coolest looking part I've ever made. That's one individual little part. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. How's that for a cool little piece of an A-arm? That 
that should be the uh, piece that goes in the middle here of this, like so, and then the strip across it there without any hexagons gone. <laughs> hexagons. Anyway, without the hexagons, uh, that part is where the other one of these strips will weld into it. Well, I haven't even knocked the slag off, and I'd say that fits pretty much perfectly. That's cool. Now I just need to cut out another one of these so that I can test, the, you know, how close to the right plane of flatness this is. There we have it. First A-arm is all uh, tacked together and it looks insane. If you look at it perfectly straight on, you can see right through that all the hexes line up, but any other angle and it's just this crazy like space frame looking thing. It's definitely heavier than the original, but it's also four inches longer. That is a beefy boy. And it looks super cool instead of super duper lame. Also, I think it's probably just a little bit stronger. We've got one inch tubing instead of uh, whatever this is, like seven eighths tubing or something. Also, you know, just much more beef. Mmm. Premium. That is good. I like the way that looks. <laughs> oh, it's way too cool. Well, uh, that's the two front uppers done. I don't know. I'd say that looks uh, pretty dang good. Second one went way faster than the first because, you know, obviously, didn't have to do any CAD, already had a plan, already knew all the measurements. We'll probably have like 14 inches of travel in the front or something. <laughs> it's gonna be like basically an actual trophy truck's worth of travel on like a little Barbie camper. All right, two down, six to go. The tops I made four inches longer. The bottoms are gonna be four and an eighth. And the reason for that is to just get a little bit of camber in it.
that's going to go all the way across this um, this A arm, all the way across the bottom, which will serve a couple of functions. One, obviously, it will stiffen it up far more than necessary, and two, it will help protect uh, from sticks going through and hitting the CV boots. So, win-win. actually wasn't quite what I intended. I intended to bend it in the middle of this bit, but that actually works out just fine that it bent right at the hexagons. Boy, that looks <clears throat> rather excellent. need uh, limit straps for down travel because the geometry of these ball joints actually stops the travel just a little bit before the bottom. 10 inches to center of that bolt hole. What did I say? 10 inches at the bottom. And now we have 20. Huh. Actually, we only got 10 inches of travel out of it. That's a lot. Only 10 inches of travel. 10 inches is insane. It is, yes. I actually just, I thought it was, I just expected it to be more because the kernel is more than 10. Really? Mm-hmm, slightly. But the kernel's shocks are totally different. I'm actually happy with that, honestly, because any more than, than, uh, more than 10 inches and those shocks probably wouldn't be stiff enough. Yeah. And technically there would be another probably half inch of down travel. This piece of uh, scrap here is just barely big enough for this other plate. Um, and when we're done here, we're gonna have like a couple hundred of these little hexagon things. <laughs> Not that they're worth anything or useful, but hey, a couple hundred little tiny steel hexagons. It's what we call weight reduction coins right there. This coin is worth one weight reduction. We could have a poker tournament. We could make a miniature set of Catan, a miniature Catan board with steel tiles. today. Very convenient. Oh, you almost fumbled I that. I know, one. I almost, it was a fumble. Yo, Will, now that you got uh, Cindy running again, you should go down and grab the mail. Yes, dude! Hopefully I don't get stranded. I know she can be temperamental sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's no, only half a mile there and back. You yeah. should be fine. Every single day. <laughs> I saw a couple of people down on like the regular road while I was getting mail and they were just like, huh? 
<laughs> and I just get out of my premium Barbie Jeep, get some mail, I have a little rucksack on the back of my car. Sick! I'd daily commute in this thing. Honestly, I would daily commute to work in this thing. So, moving on to the last complicated piece for this long travel project, and that is the rear lower control arms. You can see they are the beefiest and most complex of the arms. So, my thought is, if I cut these here and extend it four inches, that would work, and then I can just make essentially two of these at whatever dimension I need them that start all the way at the back of this, like where this pivot point will be, come up to the, you know, new shock mount, back down and then maybe even out this way a little bit for extra strength. I can also fill in this zone here with a piece of honeycomb mesh like this for, you know, excessive overkill strength and to match the aesthetic. I make like one out of 10 of these trash can shots. Oh, that was one out, actually that's two for two today. So, I'm on a roll today. So, uh, yeah, I think that'll work. You see the gusset there? Um, it's got this extra space at the bottom because that'll come uh, down the side of this arm here, wrap around this, come down to that. I was doing a little test fit here. Just the outside of the shock body here runs into these arms because these the rear A arms are just at a steeper angle than the fronts. It just so happens to line up with this little hexagon notch here. So I'm just gonna cut the top out of that and see how it lines up. Obviously that does compromise the strength somewhat, but I can always beef it up otherwise. Hey, hey look at that. It clears at maximum extension. <laughs> Premium travel right there. <laughs> yeah. I just have to make the big honeycomb plates for the bottom of this, which is super unnecessary. But, uh, you know, is building a Barbie camper necessary in the first place? I don't think so. And the mission to see how many little hexagons we can cut today continues. And I did all of this squiggly stuff in here just because it looks better than having it straight across. is freaking cool. Uh, as you may have noticed by now, uh, I've become obsessed with hexagonal mesh honeycomb structures because they look really cool. Oh, premium, premium fitment right there. Forty-four millimeters. So if I wanted it just a skosh smaller.
Got the final piece of uh, CNC cut bracketry. Uh, bracketry? Uh, gussetry. Gussetry, yeah, that's a word. And I already have the whole other arm's worth of flat stuff cut out. So I've probably cut a few hundred little tiny hexagons. The whole front setup's done, the rear lowers are done. Now we just gotta do the rear uppers. And we'll be long traveling our way to glory. Uh, if all else fails, you can use this to stamp the hex patterns onto a zombie face. Whap! The amount of times every week that I'm wearing safety glasses sparks go under them and hit my eyeball is quite irritating. And make it nice and strong. quick test fit to see if it uh, does in fact clear the old uh, the old muffler and we have to find out how much travel we have now I mean it looks like it's gonna clear the muffler I don't think we have that much droop oh hey right next to the hammer group. that's perfect and 22 and an eighth. So that's uh, 11 and an eighth inches of travel. So 10 up front, 11 in the rear. That's, uh, that's about what the kernel has. Oh wait, look at that. And uh, actually, if I move these shock mounts up, then we can get more travel. So I'm probably gonna do that. Such an exciting delivery today. I've been excited about a lot of things on this long travel uh, endeavor, but this is maybe the most exciting part. New shoes. And these are, without question, the coolest looking wheels we've yet put on a Power Wheels. Ooh, I like that. Just a clip-in center cap. Look at that. New wheels for two reasons. One, obviously they're shiny and look awesome. Um, two, they have the right bolt pattern so we can get rid of the wheel spacers. And three, they're the right offset for better um, steering geometry. Here's my excessively fancy and continuing with all of the hexagons theme. Triple shock mount. So each mount hole is essentially um, up one inch and out one inch from the previous one. So that should make for significant changes in the geometry. And uh, it looks super cool. It's mirrored like this because I'm gonna cut it out as one piece and then fold it along this line here and this line here, fold those at 90 degrees in the brake so that I have both sides of the mount and the brace across the back all in one piece.
got awesome new shock mounts uh, welded on, done, cut out, bent, welded, installed. And uh, each hole location equates to about two inches difference in ride height. So this is the highest setting here and the most travel at 13 full inches of travel, which is awesome. This one here, if I can get in there, that one's about two inches lower ride height and it's basically the same travel. It's a tiny bit less, but not enough to matter. And then for like, you know, high speed flat track situations, for stability, you can go all the way up to here, which is four inches less ride height and uh, slightly stiffer too, because as it comes out from center, it gets stiffer and less travel. Of course, you could also stiffen it up with adding air to them, but the cool thing about having the different brackets is that you can have stiff suspension and lower ride height without limiting straps or anything. So, that's a win. And next up is something I've been neglecting for, well, the entirety of the build, which is a sway bar. I found this one laying around in my parts pile. It had these little plastic bushings, found a piece of tube that they fit in. And my plan here is that that tube is gonna be welded to the seat, actually. The seat, uh, you know, chassis. This needs to be removable in order to get the differential out. Um, when all of that stuff comes out, the differential goes up through the frame. So the sway bar has to be removable as well. So this was just a test bracket to check the travel throw that away. Uh, and I drew up a new bracket in CAD that looks like these plates, obviously super overkill, but it has to match. stuff all tacked in, um, including the sway bar tube here tacked to the seat. And I realize this is probably highly likely to be the world's first instance of a sway bar mounted to a seat. I think it's pretty <laughs> unlikely that's ever happened before. So now I'm just gonna make a little um, gusset that goes to the outside here and up to here um, because the end of this needs a little bit of extra support and it'll look super cool because more hexagons. Without a doubt, the coolest whale and tire we've ever had. Oh yeah, they bound it out perfectly. I know, like That's it actually deal. looks yeah. nice. Yeah, so now the contact patch, instead of being 11 inches wide, is only like three. <laughs> oh, so, so much cool. travel. Yeah. Dude. It's so wide too, because these are like skinnier tires, but farther out. Yeah. So they look just like stupidly wide. It's just coming out at the perfect temperature to be heat treated. So satisfying. Yeah. Look at that. That is the longest and bluest curly cue I have ever had off the lathe. <laughs> perfect for a bracelet. Oh, that's a good Mad Max bracelet. Oh. No. It's oh. too brittle. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, but these are uh, snowmobile axles, snowmobile drive axles, and um, not only are they a good, strong, semi-hardened metal, but they're also hexagonal, which makes them super strong. And uh, they look cool. You go with, you know, the 800 other hexagons on the bill. <laughs> you know, I'll throw them in the lathe, drill out both ends to axle diameter, uh, tap the axles in, weld them up, hope they turn out straight, and then uh, 
then all I have to do is weld all the A-arms and we can go for a test rip. Now it's time for a solid day of TIG welding. Welcome to my modern art installation uh, entitled How I Became Obsessed with Hexagons. It's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's an art piece about structural integrity and OCD and design. Um, and now it's time to put it on the Barbie camper because it's a functional piece of art. Dry enough. Dry enough. <laughs> For once I actually painted something right away, I was like gonna just throw these on there and then I was like, wait a minute, they're already clean. If I paint them now, I won't have to re-clean them Later, yeah. so. As clean as they're ever gonna be. Yeah. Ooh, most exciting of times. <laughs> For real though.
It looks so pre-runner from the front. <laughs> it's yeah. just so wide and long. That's what you want. Dang. That's a lot of flex. Yep. Still decent steering angle at full at full bump too. For real. Not everything, but at least you've got some. Yum yum. I, I can travel the rear a little bit too. It'll still just flex the sway bar, but I can, that's the point of it. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's insane. Look at this travel. <laughs> Got the Carolina squat going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, these shocks are so smooth and adjustable. Oh yeah. This is gonna be just unstoppable. <laughs> Look how tall it is. Yeah, well it's still, especially in the front, it's still sitting up high because it hasn't been squished. You know, the tires Feels good in there. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> break your brain. You cannot comprehend how smooth this is. <laughs> like you've driven the Colonel, right? Probably yeah. About the best suspension you've ever been in. Yeah. The Colonel is a brick compared to this. <laughs> I saw the amount of confidence you had straight out the gate is insane. Oh it must feel God. nice. Uh, it, it has so much travel and these shocks are so good. Like it, this didn't even feel it. It felt like, like it felt like the tires never left the ground. <laughs> Jeez. Well, they did. I can tell you that yeah. they did. Your tires were leaving the ground quite I a bit. I knew. Well, this is extremely reminiscent of when we long traveled the Colonel because um, we did the long travel and then I jumped it up that hill and immediately broke an axle and I just did the same thing, which is interesting. Um, I really planned on these being more than strong enough, but what I didn't plan on is the extensions are strong, the axle itself just sheared, which is probably due to uh, welding on it a lot. It probably tempered it weirdly. It, you know, hardened it and made it brittle or softened it and made it not hard <laughs> as, you know, as that would mean. <laughs> so now I got to fix that before we can do any more yeeting.
Got the axles welded back together. Uh, who knows how long they'll last, but they'll last at least long enough for us to go test the, you know, jumping capacity of this thing. Taking it out on the big tabletop. This is gonna be good. <laughs> He does not go that fast through these woods in the kernel. He doesn't go through the woods at any speed in anything like that. He's <laughs> ripping through. Dude, this thing is so much fun. The suspension is truly absurd. It looked like you were on the rally course, but you were just in the forest. Yeah. Just romping around. Yeah. Fast. He is ripping! <laughs> oh my gosh, I've never seen someone go that fast around the rally track. <laughs> We're gonna get so many. <laughs> you should have set up the harness comments. Oh my gosh, I can only imagine. <laughs> and just saying I agree. <laughs> <laughs> just shows me how much confidence Ethan has in that build. Yeah. That he's going hard. Like yeah. in, in person, it's it's insane. I don't know what it looks like to you guys. But oh, I think it looks pretty insane. Yeah, it's pretty insane. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of the CVT, how it's like always wide open. Yeah, just <laughs> It's great. That's fun. Oh shoot. What? <laughs> We're waxed. Oh! oh That's the it. most waxed we've ever hit a GoPro lens. The lens That's like... Very well done, extra crispy. <laughs> Let me see. Oh my god! There's a hole all the way through it! I know, it looks like we shot it. Wow, did it go into the real lens? I hope not. Fly over those stumps? Yes. Hit wheelies! You want to pull me down? <laughs> Ready? Hit the brake! Yeah! Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. Oh yeah. Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> we do a dang thing. We do 
give me a wheelie bar though. <laughs> Apparently so. Oh yeah, it's so funny so because Steve cool. Hessek just asked me if it does wheelies. <laughs> and I was like, oh, not so far. It does. It does wheelies. That Do you get some gas cool. on you? No, I thought it was gas, that's why I was worried, but it, I think it was just water that was sitting somewhere up here that oh. was all over me. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't gas. I thought it nice. was. Nice. That's why I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, that was, nice. that was epic. That was amazing. <laughs> I tried hitting the brake, but I think I was already sitting on the back of it by the time I hit the brake. <laughs> I think this is a uh, a really good before it's fully welded send. <laughs> yeah, it's the best we've ever done for sure. <laughs> uh. Most of the really important parts are mostly welded. Yeah, basically I was like, I was trying to ride it out a little bit more, but there's just such a fine line on this between like a little bit of wheelie and all of the wheelie. Cause like once you get up, there's a, like more weight to just pull it back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like, oh yeah, it's fine. I'll just hit the brakes. And I hit the brakes and nothing happened. I was like, well, I guess I'm just riding this one out. <laughs> that was awesome. This is our Arc Droid CNC plasma cutter that I used to make all of the parts for this video and many, many other things. And it's super duper awesome. It's got a trace feature so you can trace a shape. Super compact, super awesome. And we're giving one away. So every $5 you spend on our website gets you an entry to win, and you could buy this CAD shirt, which highlights the three major types of CAD. Cardboard-aided design, coffee-aided design, and computer-aided design, you know, the original CAD. And also, for the first time ever, we have jerseys, which is super sick. We've got mesh on the inside to keep you cool when you're riding. We've got the Grand Hard Plumbing Company logo, and the Scent and Bent logo. And we found the same manufacturer that does the Yamaha and Honda jerseys. So it's like... <laughs> Sorry, I was trying not to cough. Every $5 you spend gets you an entry to win this ArcDroid CNC unit and a plasma cutter to run it. So you'll have everything you need to cut out crazy hexagon suspension parts or custom bottle openers like this. Mess up the body? No. <laughs> it seems pretty fine. No, the body. Yeah, you're fine. chilling, dude. I, it's you didn't mint. Even take the body. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. I am a little taller than Ethan, that's for sure. Watch out, universe. Here I come. It's crazy. I haven't even, I need to uh, give it a little jump in and try the hill climb, but holy smokes. I love just like holding it wide open too. Like yeah, not worrying not about shifting, like shifting yeah. and like, but you're like constantly accelerating. It's so cool. All right, here he is.
<sighs> I think it gets pretty dang good grip too. Yeah, honestly, it's better than you'd expect. The weight distribution's really nice. Wow. 